Hi, this is Paul, N1BUG, and today I just want to talk a little bit about my 2200 and 630 meter transmitting antenna and uh, try to give those who may not be familiar with the subject a little, little bit of a beginning of an understanding of the difficulties of transmitting on these bands and the, uh, some of the problems involved. I'm really only going to talk about 2200 meters today. I use this antenna on both, but to keep it simple, we're only going to talk about my favorite of the two bands, which is 2200 meters. So in the uh, big blue um, drum over here is a big loading coil. We'll get to that in a minute. The antenna itself is a vertical wire uh, that runs up here from the loading coil all the way up here to a height of about 90 feet. And if I can uh, see it here, it runs up there and it splits off in three directions in a little triangle and goes to the top hat on this antenna, the uh, capacity hat, which is three wires uh, spaced five feet apart. So the overall distance between them is about 10 feet uh, from the outside one to the other outside one. And this top hat is a little over 100 feet long. It runs uh, from one tower here. Let me move over here and see if I can get a little better angle with the sun for myself. Runs over to near that tower over there. There's one end of it. Over through center here and it runs over to... Uh, there, there's the center right there where the vertical wire goes up and attaches to the top hat. And over there near the other tower is the other end of it. So actually this is a little more than a hundred feet long with the three wires up there for top loading on this antenna. So if we uh, come back here to the uh, feed point and uh, loading coil, first of all the coax uh, comes out from the house and goes into a uh, matching transformer there in the little gray plastic box. There are two rotary tap switches to select taps on the primary and the secondary of this transformer to change the impedance step up or step down ratio in my case step up um, from the coax which is 50 ohms to the resistive component of this antenna impedance which is on 2200 meters well in excess of 100 ohms which I'll talk about more in a minute uh, from the matching transformer on the antenna side, we come out and go into the uh, big drum here. And there's a large loading coil in here. Uh, I don't know how well the black wire is going to show up, but the big coil with black wire down in the bottom is about 2 millihenries, or 2,000 microhenries. Usually with HF antennas, uh, we're talking about microhenries. Down here, it's almost more convenient to talk in terms of millihenries. We need so much inductance to resonate these things. The uh, smaller coil is about 200 microhenries or uh, 0.2 millihenry. I actually need about 2.3 millihenries to resonate this antenna on 137 kilohertz in the middle of the 2200 meter band. So um, the way this works is that there's a motor on the bottom which turns a um, nylon threaded rod which comes up through here and that pushes the inner coil up and down so it can go down and be centered totally inside the uh, large coil or it can come up and be totally outside it. Right now it's almost all the way up, almost fully outside of the coil and this changes the mutual inductance between the coils. So it's not just the simple fact of adding the 2 millihenries and the uh, 0.2 millihenry and coming up with 2.2 millihenries here. I can actually vary it from that as a minimum up to about 2.5 millihenries when these coils are one inside the other because of the mutual inductance or the shared magnetic field between the coils, uh, increasing coupling, uh, increasing the total um, inductance that this can reach. So the way this antenna is resonated, I have a little switch in the, uh, in the operating position where I can move this inner coil up or down and get just the right amount of inductance to resonate this antenna, in other words, zero uh, reactance, 
at the operating frequency and this antenna changes constantly any rain or snow showers uh, anything like that uh, will change the characteristics of this antenna and it will actually move and yet two to one SWR bandwidth is very narrow on this uh, so <laughs> you can see the the impedance changing the SWR changing very quickly and and then I have to hit the switch and uh, and move it uh, retune it if the weather changes so uh, that is the way this works now one of the problems with 2200 meter antennas is that this is a vertical antenna but a full quarter wave vertical on this band would be over 1700 feet tall obviously we can't do that for practical reasons and uh, we can't do that for regulatory reasons either we're limited to a height of 60 meters or about 197 feet uh, by FCC regulations on this band so we have to use a very short antenna and that's the reason for the uh, capacitance uh, capacity hat on top for top loading and the large resonating inductance at the bottom to make this very short antenna in terms of wavelength uh, resonate on the band uh, the problem with that is efficiency goes down uh, now what I'm going to talk about here is just uh, an overview kind of for the layman if you really want to get into this stuff you need to do further reading on on antenna system losses and and radiation resistance and efficiency but uh, for those who might be new to this what we have here this is an equivalent resistive circuit of the antenna and uh, we feed power in from these two points here we're feeding uh, RF power into it which causes a current to flow through what's essentially looks like three resistances in series RR uh, at the top of this diagram which is the resistance the very small resistance which is um, associated with or responsible for radiation that's the actual part of the resistance that uh, that radiates power from the antenna RL is losses like the resistance of the wire and the loading coils and RG is ground resistance and it's very difficult to get RG down uh, low on these bands uh, in my case, uh, this antenna, radiation resistance is about um, a little bit less than one-tenth of an ohm, a little bit less than 0 0.1 ohm. Losses are a few ohms, uh, less than 10. But the ground loss resistance in summer is 120 ohms on this thing. Uh, the RG is 120 ohms. So my total uh, losses are nearly 130 ohms in summer uh, we'll call it 120 to be on the safe side um, and radiation resistance is 0.1 so um, that means that the efficiency of the, this antenna is 0 0.0008 or 0 0.08 percent less than one tenth of one percent of the power you feed into this gets radiated so without going through all of the math uh, the net result since FCC wants us to um, to restrict our radiated power to one watt effective isotropic radiated power they're using the theoretical isotropic radiator as a reference I need to pump about 400 watts in summer uh, of RF power into this antenna to get my a uh, little bit less than my one watt EIRP legal limit radiated in winter it's a little bit better the uh, the ground changes the ground loss resistance changes somehow and um, and that number falls to under 100 ohms, so I, I actually do a little better or need a little less power in winter to get my 1 watt radiated. Um, despite the fact that I have quite a good ground system, but it's not large enough and it's not centered under the antenna. Uh, around the far tower over there, which is kind of outside of one end of the antenna, beyond one end of the antenna, I have about 15,000 feet of wire in a radial system because that tower is also my 160 meter uh, vertical shunt fed. Um, unfortunately, uh, most of those uh, radials go off in other directions. Only a few come back this way and run past this antenna. And there are no radials around the other tower at all. That one's pretty much outside the, the radial field altogether. Running between the two towers and right underneath this loading coil, uh, there is 
a, uh, a large uh, cop buried copper conductor, six gauge, and seven ground rods driven in along that that kind of ties things together, and, and that's where the ground from this ties in. But uh, even with all that ground system, my losses are, are very, very high. It probably would help if I put in some more radials going out from this center point here and maybe some others on the other side of the tower or around that tower over there. Um, but right now uh, I don't have that. Um, so until I do, I just need to run enough power to make my, uh, my legal limit. And there you go. Uh, by the way, this uh, antenna that we're talking about here was uh, involved in the first amateur radio two-way QSO between the United States. We just got the band uh, less than a year ago here. And Europe. I worked uh, 2E0ILY in England uh, this past March for the first uh, amateur two-way across the pond, so to speak. So um, despite all of the restrictions and the issues in getting this to work, uh, this antenna actually, actually does uh, radiate and you can communicate. It's difficult, and it took us four nights to complete the QSO on a mode called DFCW, or Dual Frequency CW, which is extremely slow. Um, and speed is roughly about one word per hour, <laughs> so it takes, uh, it takes nights to transfer call signs, signal reports, and confirmations, but uh, we did get it done. So that's just a, a brief overview of the 2200 meter and 630 meter uh, transmitting antenna here at N1BUG. Thanks for watching.